Okay, it's live now. So <clears throat> let's ask all pay respect, pay homage to the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha first. Namo tasa pahawato arahato sama samputasa. Namo tasa pahawato arahato sama samputasa. Namo tasa pahawato arahato sama samputasa. Hi everyone from around the world. Um, another week with me, I am Wangsi. I'm from Thailand. Now I'm staying in Mahawana Tutanka in Lampang Province, Thailand. I have to tell you that um, I'm sorry that I haven't paused um, like you know, schedule the Dhamma session. Normally I would post like in the morning or in the afternoon, right? But today I post like um, 30 minutes in advance. I think, I think, oh no, 15 minutes in advance because actually today I had to go somewhere else and I don't have time to prepare. So I'm sorry for that. But Anyway, this topic just pop up um, less than an hour. But I think this is a good topic that we should study together. Um, is today we're going to discuss how to protect yourself and others. It's from Sangyutaya Sangyut. Hang on. Samyutta Nikaya connected discourses on the establishment of mindfulness. It's called, it's called Setaka. Um, I think there's in some error, right? Because I cannot post the link. Here's the link for you all that you can read through together. Okay. So, hi, Ned. First time attending the lecture. Glad that you're here with me for the first time. Hi, Vivian. Hi, Greg. Hi, Jim McCarty from Ireland. Okay, let's start. Today, you learn how to protect yourself and protect others, as well as we're going to um, talk about practice mindfulness. Okay. Protect oneself and others, say Taka, Sanyutta Nikai, SN 47.19. Okay. On one occasion, the Blessed One was dwelling among the, among the Sampa, where there was a town in the Sampa named Setaka. So Setaka is the name of the town that this story happened. That the Blessed One addressed the bhikkhu. Bhikkhus. When the Buddha addressed bhikkhu, doesn't mean that only bhikkhu there, but bhikkhu, bhikkhuni, upasaka, upasika, like the lay people. But he only gonna, you know, address just like the, the head, like the bhikkhu. Okay. Bhikkhu, once in the past, an acrobat set up his bamboo pole and addressed his appendix. Metha Gathalika. Okay, the appendix called Metha Gathalika. Come, dear Metha Gathalika, climb the bamboo pole and stand on my shoulders. You know, the acrobat, right? You climb the bamboo pole and stand on my shoulders. And then the appendix said, yes, teacher. So after that, the apprentice climbed up the bamboo pole and stood on the teacher's shoulders. The acrobat then said to the apprentice, you protect me and I'll protect you. Thus guarded by one another, protected by one another, we'll display our skills, collect our fees and get out safely from the bamboo pole. So the teacher and the student, like the teacher said to the student, okay, now that you stood on my shoulders, 
you protect me and I'll protect you. When we are guarded by one another, protected by one another, then we will display our skills and then we can get down safely from the pole. This is what the teacher said. But the student, the apprentice said to the teacher, that's not the way to do it, teacher. You protect yourself, teacher, and I'll protect myself. Thus, each self-guarded and self-protected will display our skills, collect our fees, and get out safely from the bamboo pole. So this is quite interesting, right? When the teacher say like, okay, and then you protect me and I'll protect you. But the teacher, no, that's not the way to do it. You protect yourself and I'll protect myself. And each self-guarded, self-protected, then we able to get out safely from the bamboo pole. Once the Buddha said, it, said this, the Buddha said, that's the method there. It's just as the apprentice Metaka Kahalika said to the teacher. I will protect myself, Pikku. Thus, should be establishment of mindfulness be practiced. When the Buddha said, I protect myself, that means that you should establish the mindfulness. You should be practiced. Um, the mindfulness should be practiced. I will protect others because that should be the establishment of mindfulness be practiced. Protect oneself, one protects others. Protecting others, one protects oneself. So the first thing that we can learn from this is the word the Buddha said, I will protect myself. That means you should practice, you should establish, you should develop the mindfulness. If you are mindful, then, then you will protect yourself, right? And then when you will protect others, then you're going to um, practice the mindfulness as well. The mindfulness should be established, should, should be cultivated. Protecting oneself, one protects others. Protecting others, one protects oneself. This is very interesting. So now, the question. How is it that by protecting oneself, one protects others? How can you protect yourself and then you can protect others as well? The Buddha said, by the pursuit, development, and cultivation of the four establishments of mindfulness, that we actually discussed in the last session, right? That um, the four establishment of mindfulness or the satipatthana for is very crucial in Buddhism in order to cultivate the mindfulness. It is in such a way that by protecting oneself, one protects others. So if you want to protect yourself and others as well in the, at the same time, so you should pursue, develop, and cultivate the um, the full establishment of mindfulness. In short, you should be mindful. There's one saying the Buddha said, but I'm I'm not sure like where is it. You know, in the which um, books of the Pitaka, but the Buddha said two two things to Dhamma that we're gonna you know support you is to be to have the <clears throat> to be mindful <clears throat> sorry to be mindful and to have the wisdom sapachanya sati and sampachanya so here if the mindfulness is well cultivated then you are considered protecting yourself and protecting others next question how is it that by protecting others one protects oneself. You want to protect others as well, but at the same time, it's considered that you protect yourself by patience, harmlessness, loving kindness, and sympathy. It is in such a way that by protecting others, one protects oneself. So this is kind of short discourse, 
short sutta, but we can learn a lot from this. You know, like now today, we we tend to think like, okay, I I will protect you, and you protect me. We protect each other, but actually, in this sutra, the Buddha said, that's not the method. The method is just like what the apprentice told the acrobat, the teacher, that you protect yourself and I'll protect myself. Each self-guarded, self-protected, then we can be safe, right? So how? Be mindful. If you are mindful, for example, if you are mindful when you climb the bamboo pole, the teacher is mindful. The student, the apprentice is mindful. Then we can, you know, each of us is mindful. Then we can be safe. For example, um, during the, um, the COVID-19, right? People say like, actually, when we protect, when we protect ourselves, for example, you know, like, I don't know in the Western, but here, but maybe you should protect yourself. Like you should be like, take care of yourself. Um, wear the mask, or for example, like in the past, if you protect yourself well enough, that means you protect your family. You protect your, you know, people around you. So it's just like the, yeah, just just like in this topic, but in this topic, this one, for me, I think. If you want to protect yourself, be mindful. Pursuit, development, and cultivation of the four establishments of mindfulness. But if you say, like, I want to protect others, but when you protect others, at the same time, you protect yourself as well. How? Be patient. Do no harm to others. Loving kindness is in your heart. Sympathy, compassion. You cultivate this uh, wholesome qualities. It's just like you protect others when others are happy, when you do no harm to each other and you be patient. These sort of qualities is good in the society, right? It's just like you protect others as well at the same time you protect yourself. So this is good that we should know like, okay, now I learned that we should cultivate mindfulness, right? And then at the same time, be patient, cultivate the harmlessness, loving kindness, sympathy, compassion in the society. And then we all can live peacefully with each other. Mm -hmm. Here, Ned asked, so if we protect our mind from greed, hatred, and delusion, we do not commit deeds which could not harm others, therefore we protect them too. Mm -hmm. If you can, you know, like, okay, this is wrong doing. This is false speech. I should not do this. If you are mindful enough and you can, um, like, I don't know what's it called in English, like, you can like self-discipline or something like you know what you should do, what is good and what is bad. And if you can control yourself, then it's just like you do not harm others. You, not, you do not harm others by harsh speech, something that you don't intend to speak. Like too harsh, gonna hurt someone else, right? If you can, you know, like control yourself, and then it's just like you protect others as well. Like if you can, you know what is good and what is bad, and then you are mindful enough in order to have the self-control, then you can help others. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's move on to another session. Mahasati Patana Sutta. Um, I think you all have learned about this, right? Mahasati Patana Sutta, like the four um, foundations of mindfulness. Like, if you want to practice to be mindful, 
then you have to learn this. But today, I'm pretty sure that we cannot cover it all. So I'm going to talk only on the Gaya Nupasana Sati Patana. The four main sections of foundations of mindfulness in Pali we call Chattaro Sati Patana. Sati Patana. So some people can call it four foundations of mindfulness. Okay. Four inceptions of deliberation. Okay. Four four setting up of mindfulness. Four four setting up of starting and four applications of mindfulness. For establishment of mindfulness. So whatever you call, if you want to practice mindfulness, then you have to learn this sutta. The Buddha said, the one and only path, Pikku, leading to the purification of beings, to passing far beyond grief and lamentation, to the dying out of ill and misery, to the attainment of right method, to the realization of nirvana, is that of the fourfold setting up of mindfulness. You know, the four establishment of mindfulness, this topic is the right mindfulness in the Noble Eightfold Path. So we know that in the Four Noble Truths, right? Suffering, the origin of suffering, the end of suffering, and the, the way leading to the end of suffering. The way that leading to the end of suffering, the fourth truth in the noble, four truth, noble, yeah, the four noble truth. There are eight, right? Right view, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and then right um, concentration. So right, the right mindfulness is this topic, sati patthana. So the Buddha said, this is the way that you're going to, you know, in order to reach the samadhi or the concentration. Have you heard the word sila samadhi panya? Precepts concentration and wisdom right it's like step by step in order to have the vipassana the insight the wisdom you have to have the one pointedness of mind concentration how to have the right concentration then you need to have the precepts the right um at first like the right speech the right action right livelihood something like that the precept and then the right mindfulness is this topic the four foundations of mindfulness are divided into four main divisions like a, yeah we can call it division because like very very long and there's a lot to learn the first one kaya nupasana satipatthana about the body kaya is the body Vedhana nupasana satipatha satipatthana is about feelings, Vedhana is feelings. Chitta nupasana satipatthana is about the mind. And Thamma nupasana satipatthana about the Dhamma, the, the teachings and things that you can um, know and perceive from the mind. But today we're going to discuss Gaya nupasana satipatthana because it's Actually, it's considered, no, I was about to say that it's considered the easiest one, but actually it's up to, you know, individual, each individual. Some people say like, Vehana Nupasana is easiest, but for most of the people, they say Gaya Nupasana, because if you practice like breathing without technique anapanasati it's in kaya nupasana so kaya nupasana sati patana deals with contemplation on the body physical structure and activities with these subdivisions so as i mentioned some people regard this 
as the easiest one because we have the the equipment like the large part like because we have to contemplate on the body the physical structure and activity so actually we can um, work on this cultivate the mindfulness through this throughout the day the first one you all are familiar with this one anapana anapana sati but here here they say anapana papa papa is the section anapana sati breathing without exhale inhale the buddha said oh piku let a brother like you go into the forest or to the roots of a tree or to an empty chamber sit down cross-legged holding the body erect set his mindfulness alert be alert mindful let him inhale mindful let him exhale what does it mean you go to somewhere that secluded that is quiet sit cross-legged or if you cannot sit cross-legged that's fine but hold the body erect set the mind be alert be mindful when you inhale you be mindful exhale be mindful the first one whether he inhaled a long breath be conscious whether he exhale a long breath be conscious number two whether he inhale a short breath or exhale a short breath be conscious number three let him practice with the thought conscious of my whole body will i inhale let him practice with the thought conscious of my whole body i will exhale number four let him practice with the thought i will inhale tranquilizing my bodily organism I will exhale tranquilizing my bodily organism. You know, like, I don't know about the translation, but normally when, when we practice, it's not going to be, you know, like this, like hard to understand. For example, be mindful when you're breathing without, right? So if you breathe in, long breath, be mindful now, this long breath is in and when exhale long breath is out this is the first one long breath inhale exhale you are mindful all the way some people all the way you can do like you can feel the breath, the stomach, you know, um, um, like grow bigger. I don't know what to call it in English. And then when exhale, like everything just like, just like a, you know, exhale. You can do like this. Or some people, you have to focus on just one point that you can feel the breath. Some people are around here long breath you know it here exhale and you can feel it here so you know that okay long breath in long breath out that is the first one the second one if you inhale like now you know you always mindful that oh long long breath this is short breath normally as a technique for some people when there's many things going on in your life and you want to you know like be mindful you can do like the long breath first just to calm down but maybe just like three times or five times 
or maybe nine times at most. I don't know, but normally like three times, five times because when you do this a lot, it's it's getting tired. So maybe three times, five times, and then normally auto automatically the body when you do the short breath because getting tired. So when you get getting the short breath, then you know mindful short breath in, short breath out. This is the second one. The third one. Practice with the thought, conscious of my whole body. I inhale. It's just like okay, now I know. Like the body, um, know the body, breathing. Know the whole body, without. The fourth one, you will feel, like, the movement, the body. Or the mind is getting quieter, like silent. This they use the word tranquilizing. They can feel like it's like delicate. No, no force. Just like let it flow naturally, and then you know. Mm, just like that. So about the breathing, breathe out. It's just like it. When you breathe in, long breath. You know, long breath out. You know, short breath. Inhale, exhale. You be mindful. You know, you can sense the whole body. Okay, and then I know about this. And then when the body, when the breath is getting uh, tranquilized, is getting like quieter, delicate. Free, light, and then just you be mindful about that state, and that's it. Next one. Iriya Patha. Iriya Patha or Iriya Bod Papa. The section on postures. Now we're talking about the posture. The Bhikkhu, when he is walking, is aware that I walk like the body. Walk. When he is standing, is aware that the body is in the standing posture. Normally, I don't know in English, but in Thai, for Thai people, we don't really. We try to omit. We try to, you know. Omit, yeah. Delete the word "I," because the word "I" is just like. The self, the atta, right? So we just know that the body is in the walk, is walking. So now I know. I'm aware that the body is walking. When he is standing, now I know that this body in the standing procedure, a posture. When he is sitting, is aware of the body, sit. When he's lying down, he's aware of it. He's just aware of you know. Posture, without having the concept that I walk, I stand, I sit, or I lie down, something like that. So you just know the posture. Be mindful of the posture. However, he is disposing the body. He is aware thereof. So does he, as to the body, continue to consider the body, either internally or externally, or both internally and externally? So, as I mentioned earlier, that when you cultivate or when you develop the mindfulness, it's not just like the sitting meditation. You can do the walking meditation, or you can apply to be mindful in whatever activity in your daily life. Like when you walk, you know that okay, this is walking. You know where to step on. You know what I mean? Like okay, this is maybe. It's not that safe. I should, you know, avoid this path and then use another path. For example, now I know that I stand, which this is the standing posture. I sit before I sit. I have to look, you know, and then I sit properly or something like that. Okay. Next, สัมปชัญญะปะพะ Oh, thank you. ขยาย expand. 
สัมปชัญญะปะพะ section on clear understanding actually the word สัมปชัญญะ yeah um it can mean the wisdom so here with the translation clear understanding is good moreover pico a brother whether he departs or returns whether he looks at or looks away from whether he has drawn in or stretched out his limbs whether he has drawn under robe over robe or bowed whether he is eating drinking chewing reposing whether he is obeying the course of nature is aware of what he is about in going standing sitting sleeping watching talking or keeping silent he knows what he is doing so does he as to the body continue to consider the body see does not consider as the self continue to consider the body either internally or externally or both he keeps on considering how the body is something that comes to be and again he keeps on considering how the body is something that passes away or again he keeps on considering the coming to be with the passing away or again conscious that there is the body mindfulness becomes thereby established far enough for the purpose of knowledge and of self collectedness and he abides independent grasping after nothing in the world whatever thus bhikkhu does a brother continue cons to consider the body see so sampachanya is like you know what you do what you doing at that very moment when you go out when you depart when you return when you look at when you look away when you stretch out drawn in to the robe the bowl eating drinking chewing whatever activity that you do going standing sitting sleeping watching talking you know what you doing but not just know the action but you have to know that this is just the body that comes to be this is just the body that gonna pass away this is just the body you know with the activity you have you have the clear understanding about this then you be mindful in whatever you do you know when you practice the gayanupasana right more and more and then you notice that mm, not that much accident that happen in your daily life for example normally like for me when i walk when i was like haven't practiced you know mindfulness i always like stumble you know like you know step on like misstep or something like that but when we cultivate or develop to be mindful in the activity in daily life then you be more careful in whatever you do okay now you should do this oh be careful don't drop that you know so you can develop to be mindful in every activity in your daily life that's the point next p a t i k u l a manasika p a p a there's a section on contemplation of impurities the buddha said moreover p i k u l a brother reflects upon this very body from the sole of his feet below upward to the crown of his head as something enclosed in skin and full of diverse impurities here is in this body hair and nail teeth skin flesh bones kidney you know a lot of things inside here that is not pure like all dirty all impurity just as if there were a double mouth sample bag biko full of various sort of grain such as rice paddy beans h u s k for boiling 
and a keen-eyed man were to reflect as he poured them out. That's rice. That's paddy. Those are beans, and so forth. Even so, Pico, does the brother reflect upon the body? Continue to consider the body, internally and externally, or both, and then you will know that. You know how this is the body that comes to be, and again, this is the body is something that passes away. You cultivate mindfulness. Then you have the right knowledge. You have the clear understanding and self collectedness, and then he abides independent, grasping after nothing in the world. This is how to cultivate, to be mindful, regard the body. Yes, I will answer to your question after we finish the presentation. Okay. So, actually, you know, like I'm not sure about the retreat in the Western country, but in Thailand, some place has the retreat. Like, okay, fifteen days to do like the the mindfulness or meditation, right? And then I'm not sure about this because I haven't experienced one. Maybe like the last three days. If I'm not mistaken, the last three day, they will not allow us to take a bath, to brush the teeth, to wash the face, in order for us to really see that this body is not as beautiful as you think. It's not as clean. But personally, is you don't have to take you know three days to see. Just one day, for example, if you don't take a bath today in Thailand because it's very hot and humid, right? So if you don't take a bath today, tomorrow is just like so you know, like sticky and stinky. If you really notice the body as it is, you know that it's dirty. Everything that comes out from the from the body is not pleasant at all. So if you practice this all the time, then you see the body as something that you should not cling on to. You don't have to buy, you know, expensive shampoo or you know, like bath, uh, like the the the. Sorry, the cat. You don't have to buy something expensive to you know, like to make. To spoil the body that much, you know, like it's just to to wrap off the dirtiness, and that's it. And and life is gonna be easier. Mm. Yes. So this is another one of Kaya Kata City. The next one. t a t u Manasika Papa section on contemplation of elements. You know the body consists of the four primary elements of earth, water, heat, and air. Mm -hmm. Something that is hard, something that like the flesh, like the teeth, um, the bones, earth, water is just like the the urine, the blood, heat, something that you uh, like the heat that make us. Um, digest when you feel the heat inside. When you get a fever or something like that, you know, oh, this is heat. And the air, you know, when you fart or when you, you know, burp or something like that, then you know that okay, earth, water, heat, and fire. And moreover, or just as a cattle butcher or his apprentice, when he has slain an ox, display the carcass piecemeal at the crossway as he sits. Even so, Pico does the brother reflect upon this very body with respect to its fundamental constituents. So now, for example, if you really see the body as it is, if you if I take out the flesh, the bone, the teeth, the you know skeleton or something like that, then you know, oh, this is earth. Oh, this is water. 
so if we we learn to to learn the truth about the body then it's easier for us to detach the self to detach the desire the craving of this body or that body of someone else so this is the way to cultivate the mindfulness and the way to cultivate the clear understanding the right and this understanding of the body that it is just the body not me not you not self or not as pleasant as you think and then it's gonna be easier to detach mm -hmm. as Ned said I is quite misleading of Sakayatiti, delusion of self. Yes, so here in Nirodharam, we practice to not use the pronoun too, you know, often. But it's kind of hard when you speak, right? So you use the pronoun with the knowledge that no self, no self. Okay, the last one. Hi, Mandalay, please, watching from Myanmar. The last one. Nawa Siwatika. Now I just lost. I don't remember the Thai um, pronunciation. Yeah, you, this is the section of nine stage, section on nine stages of corpse. So now you contemplate the corpse. The part one, bhikkhu, if a bhikkhu should see a body one day dead or two days dead or three days dead, swollen, blue, festering, discarded in the shallow ground, he then compares it to his own body. Thus, truly this body is of the same nature. It will become like that and cannot escape from it from it. Thus he dwells perceiving again and again the body just as the body in himself. Thus bhikkhu. This is also a way in which a bhikkhu dwells perceiving again and again the body just as the body. In I don't know in other parts of the, the world but in Thailand I think maybe in the northern part more in the northern part that we can you know Go and then observe. We can ask the hospital to come and then to observe like the the corpse. Um, not just like one day dead or two days dead, but maybe the bone or something like that. So it's good to learn from the dead that oh swollen, oh discarded, oh this body and that body. Is of the same nature. One day I'm going to be like that. When you reflect, when you contemplate like this, it's good to detach, you know, yourself, and it's it's good to learn. The second one, the second part is a bhikkhu should see a body discarded in the shana ground, being devoured by crows, being devoured by hawks, by vulture, by um, dogs, by tigers, by, you know, animals, or even by various kinds of worms. He then compares it to his own body that truly this body is of the same nature. It, I will become like that one day and I cannot escape from it. The third one, a bhikkhu should see a body discarded in the shana ground that is just a skeleton, skeleton held together by the tendons. So the third one, you still, that crop, that corpse, it still has the tendons, some flesh and blood still adhering to it. He then compared it to his own body that I'm going to be just like that one day. And I cannot escape it. The fourth one, you should see the body but it's just a skeleton held together by the tendons. No more flesh, no more blood. The fifth, you see the skeleton held together by the tendon without flesh and blood. Hmm. Number six, 
you should see a body discarded in the shunner ground that is just loose bones scattered in all direction. At one place, bones of a hand, another place, bones of a foot, at another place, ankle bones, shin bones, thigh bones, hip bones, rib bones, spinal, shoulder bones, neck bones, jaw bone, teeth, scalp. He then compares it to his body that truly this body is of the same nature. It will become like that and cannot escape from it. This is the sixth. Number seven, you should see the body that now is just white bones of, you know, conch like color. You just see the bones and then you compare it. It's just like that. This is the truth, like the earth element. It is indeed the earth element. Number eight, you see that the bones that is not just like the fresh one, but it's the bone that more than a year old lying in a heap. And then you see like, now you cannot even distinguish like which is going to be, you know, um, that person, this person, it just compiled in the heap. Everyone here going to be just the bones compiled in the heap. Why fight with each other? Why, you know, hate each other that much when we all have to eventually become just the bones that mix together? Actually, why divide the gender? Why divide um, the nationality, the color of the, you know, the complexion color, something like that, when we all just born and if we die come together compiled um lying in a heap and that's it i'm gonna be like that one day and i cannot escape from it and the last one the people should see a body now discarded in the shana ground that is just rotten bones not even you know lying in the pile just rotted bones crumbling to dust he didn't compare to his own body. I'm going to be like that one day and I cannot escape from it. So this normally now today, I think I'm, um, you know, used normally a lot. Um, now we have like the, I don't know what's it called, like, like the place to burn the, the corpse, right? So just the corpse and then push to the to this machine and then next day you get the ash of your loved ones it's not cemetery but in thailand we don't bury the dead one we just go and then cremate yeah we cremate right right and we cremate and then the next day we got like the ash in the the white cloth uh, and we come and we you know get it in the white cloth and then you know and then you see like oh this is the person that i know that i can see i can remember him but now it's just the ash in the white cloth and then in thailand you have to go to the river and then to throw the ash. Yeah, I think maybe. Yeah, I think that is right. I think I'm not sure about that. And then we have to throw the ash into the river. And then you see like, oh, that person seven days ago, I still talk to that, still talk to him. But now just the ash that I'm throwing into the river. It's just like, Go back to the nature. Be with the nature again. So now, oh, this is life. Born, now you're born. Get sick. You might go to university, good university. You, you know, work a lot. You work for this company for many 15 years, blah, blah, blah. You have kids. You have, you know, people who love you. And then one day 
you just gone. You just this, you know, bag of ash, throw into the river, go with the wind, and then some left off on the surface of the water. So it's just like this is life. This is earth element. This is just you know mixed with the water. Water element, wind. We just return to nature. When we have the chance to <clears throat> like talk good to people, I should have done that to him. I should have talked this way. I should have you know, um, you know, be nicer to him. Blah blah blah. You cannot change anything in the past because now it's just you know, earth element <laughs> and go with the wind or something like that. So that made me realize that. Why we do have? Why should we, you know, fight so much when we have time with each other? Why can't we live with, you know, go back to the first of presentation, with patience, with harmlessness, with loving kindness, with compassion and sympathy. Make the most of our time that we can stay together. This we can learn from, you know, the ash, from that person, from the bones, or then we can learn that. Okay, I know my responsibility. I have to do this. I do my best, but I have to cultivate the wholesome qualities as well. I should not do, you know, I should not be the greedy person or, you know, have a lot of desire and the cause of suffering. Blah blah blah. I should follow the way to lead to the end of cessation or uh, to the end of suffering, and then be. Don't be heedless. Don't be careless in your life, and that is the lesson. That we can learn from this, apart from be mindfulness, okay, and that is it. This is it from the Gaya Kata Sati. The Buddha said, "Once practice, one is firmly mindful of the fact that only the body exists, not a self." This is just from some one ex explanation. It is just for gaining insight and mindfulness progressively. Being detached from craving and wrong views, one lives without clinging to anything because we know we cannot cling onto anything. One day we're gonna, you know, die and be the ash. Thus, this is also a way in which a bhikkhu dwells, perceiving again and again the body, just as the body. And this is it. Ah, uh, okay. That's it for today's topic. How to protect yourself and others. So, it's good thing that we can learn and, yeah. As the Dharma learner said, I wish we could do that ritual here in the U.S. It's so much more helpful for closure. Yes. And we can learn. I can hear a lot of people in Thailand said like, you know, that. Dead person still, you know, has a lesson. Has a lesson for me. Even he died. I can learn from the dead people. I can learn from the dead people that it's just the nature. And you cannot cling on to anything because you cannot even get one penny, one baht with you. You have to let go of everything, just die, and then burn. Just the ash, and then throw away. Not throw away. You throw to the river, back to the nature. Okay. Any question regarding this topic? Thank you very much, you all, for the. Taking part in this session, I'm sorry today I I don't have time to prepare 
and I don't, you know, like post like the schedule in advance. I'm sorry for that. Today I visit, I visited one monk. He's only 30 years old, 30 years old, but he ordained for like 11 years, I think. So he ordained just like when 20 years or something. And he, when I go, when I met him, I can feel like, okay, he practiced a lot. And then he, he has done a lot for his community, you know, like the temple is like very big and beautiful as well as like, yeah. It's good to see the younger generation in Thailand, you know, to, to have so much, so many people to, you know, respect him as a teacher. It's wonderful to see this happening in Thailand. <laughs> So, hi, Greg. Hi, Jim McCarty. Hi, I cannot read your name. Hi, Ned. Hi, Shayanta Fernando. Good morning, Aya. Hi, Niranshan from Nepal, Buddha's birthplace. Hi, Matthias, right? Hi, Jonathan Waller. Hi, Pumika from New Jersey. Hi, Sokshan. I think Mr. Monk. Satu, Satu. Thank you, Jim for helping me with the vocabulary. Hi, XN, Wonder Me, Pante. Hi, Dhamma Learner, as always. Hi, Manal. Hi, Mandalay Peace, watching from Myanmar. Hi, Kasuko Yamamoto. Hi, Pumika. Oh, hi, Vivian again. Okay, XN said you uh, want to ask something Mandalay Peace asks, how can I do not to attach for something when I think how to practice to detach, right? Not to attach. The Buddha said it's called Nipitha. Nipitha means when you see that that thing is, you know, attachment or upadhan, right? is another cause of suffering. And when you learn and when you notice and you, you learn that the more you cling on to something, the more suffering you get. But if you don't cling on to that thing, you don't suffer from that thing, right? So the more you learn about it, the more you, you know, step by step, you know, attach to it. Because, you know, like, if I attach to it, if I cling on to that thing, that person, that perception, that memory, that feeling is not good for me. I hurt, you know, it hurts so much. It's suffering. Now you know that is the cause of suffering is desire, craving, or attachment, right? So if you know the fault of it, if you know the disadvantage, the suffering outcome the more you learned about it, the easier you be detached from it. So it's just like you learn from experience. Mm. Or oh, the more you cling on to that feeling, I want that feeling in the past, when, how, blah, blah, blah. Oh, craving. Oh, suffering. Maybe try to detach with the knowledge so you have to maybe listen more to the the wise words of the blessed one the buddha's teachings the more you listen the more you you know yoniso manasika you embrace the dhamma you contemplate compare learn for yourself learn from yourself from the past experience the more you learn the more you contemplate yoniso manasika the easier it will get. XN asks, what attitude should we keep towards people who want you worst and you're never going to change 
They are enemies to society and are causing everyone harm. Everyone. Mm. The attitude that we keep towards people that um, for me now what I can think of is you know you can you experience a suffering in yourself right other people is just the same you suffer other people suffer he or that person might do bad thing because he hasn't learned what is good or what is bad. He hasn't, you know, have a, have a chance, have an opportunity to have a good friend, Kalayana Mitta, to guide him to be a better person, to guide him, this is not a good thing. You should not harm others you should not harm yourself actually and you know when people harm others actually they suffer a lot if you notice someone you know always talk bad things always you know harm other with the false speech with like harsh words actually that person suffer inside a lot so the attitude that i suggest is that i feel I have sympathy for that kind of people. They suffer inside, whatever reason. They need help. They need someone who guide them, who needs someone as to consult. If you try to, you know, give suggest, give the consultation, give the advice, give the knowledge, give the wisdom, but they, no, I don't want it. Hmm. It's not the right time to tell them. But you can let them know that you hear. Like for me, we like as the monastic, we cannot help like everyone in the world, let alone in Thailand, in Lampang province, we cannot help anyone or everyone. We can help just someone who want to be helped right so we can say like okay now you don't need our help that's fine but just know that i'm here if you want some help come here if you want to you know get out of the darkness get out of you know the suffering come here but be have sympathy for that kind of person they don't know what is good and what is bad they don't know that by doing that it harm it harms you know themselves mm. so you should as we mentioned here as in the the sutra the buddha said the buddha said protecting others then you protect yourself as well as be patient, cultivate the harmlessness and loving kindness and sympathy. Even though it's hard, you know, for that kind of person that, hey, maybe, you know, like always want the worst of me, always, you know, talk bad about me, but just think of that like, hmm, they suffer inside more than me. I know what is good and what is bad. I know that I should not hold on to the anger that person have towards me. I should, I know that loving kindness is way better than hatred. I can cultivate that wholesome qualities inside. And then I can spread the loving kindness to them as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, next say. Today, I have had the same experience with someone who wanted to project his suffering on me with ill willed words, but without success. It was yet another lesson to learn from. Yes. Yes, we can learn from anyone, 
anytime in your life you know take that experience as a lesson to grow and to you know yeah better version of you thank you so much really help do you take sessions always i have the session every thursday mm -hmm. thank you very much everyone to you know learn from each other i have the responsibility to you know like um take the words of the buddha the blessed one the enlightened one the awakened one to you all and then at the same time i can learn from you also today we learn from each other as well i learned english from you all as well thank you very much and yeah i hope you learn something that can be used in daily life protect yourself as well as protect others and then cultivate develop and pursue mindfulness in everyday life pumika said we gain so much is so different from outside world mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thank you everyone thank you narashan satu satu and from nepal buddha's birthday satu you're so blessed okay that's it for today see you again next week before we part um say satu three times satu 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 anumotami may you all be well and be healthy be happy and be protected by the power of the buddha the blessed one be happy in learning the dhamma or the buddha's teaching and be protected by the power of the noble disciple and may we all reach the right liberation the right awakening the supreme happiness nirvana or nibbana satu 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 hi metta hi cats goodbye have a good day